Hi, I'm Dr. Daria. I'm an emergency room doctor and mama on a mission to give you the peace of mind that comes with having the best answers to your health and wellness questions and knowing how to handle life's everyday emergencies. Now, when my daughter, who's now eight years old, was 12 months old, she and I were home alone and she was having a snack. At one moment, she stuffed a couple of extra pieces of chunked banana into her mouth and started to choke on them. I realized she was choking and moved faster than I ever knew I could. I sweeped her out of her high chair and immediately started doing back blows. Banana chunks eventually came out all over the floor. She started crying. The adrenaline released. I started shaking and just holding her to me and we both sat there crying, me with tears of relief. Now I think of that moment and how I was able to react instinctually because of my training and how I as an ER mama and doctor want every parent and everyone to be able to do the same, to have these life-saving techniques that we can all do be second nature to you. Now don't be scared, don't be scared of jumping in don't be scared of learning this because knowing how to do this and having the peace of mind and confidence to do it can truly help save a life. You don't need to be an ER doctor or an ER nurse or a superhero to save a life when it comes to choking. So for children under the age of one, first, what are the signs of choking? It sometimes can be subtle as we can see in the ER. Sometimes the most dangerous things are quiet. Signs can be a cough or cry that's not getting any air in or out, or it can be a very high pitched kind of whistly, uh, wheezy cry or breathing. It also can be a very rapid breathing, or it can be a child that's almost turning blue a little bit, leaning forward, grunting or flaring at their nostrils. So if that's the case, here's what to do. Now, my children are in school and also no longer infants, so we're going to use a little baby Bella is going to be helping us as my beloved demonstrator today. So first thing you do is look in their mouth. Now look, if you can see the object and you can reach it without pushing it further back, you can grab it. If you cannot see the object, do not do a blind finger sweep, okay? First, immediately what you're gonna do is back blows. So again, infants younger than one, it is a combination of back blows and chest compressions, okay? Older than one, it's abdominal compressions, but younger than one, it's back blows and chest compressions. So first, I kind of think of it like a pancake, holding them like a flip of pancakes. So you're gonna hold the baby face down on your arm. I'm scooting back so you can see it well enough. You're gonna support its face and head with your hand. I use my left hand here. And so then what you're gonna do is you find their shoulder blades and with the shoulder blades, take the heel of your hand right there and you're gonna hit right there and you're gonna hit in an upward motion. So you want their head to be below the level of their body. You're gonna hit five times. One, two, three, four, five okay the idea is that you're trying to compress the area where their lungs are to squeeze the air up against that fixed object that's blocking their lungs to squeeze it out okay so you'll do that five times if the object still doesn't come out then you're going to flip them onto their back i like to use my right hand and grab a doll grab your baby you want to grab a doll first it makes you feel better whatever you want to practice this and you take your hand over the back flip them over now baby's on their back on your arm, okay? So again, now you're gonna take two fingers because you're gonna do chest compression. Take two fingers and you're gonna feel right below, the on their breastbone, right below the nipple line. And you're gonna give five chest compressions. Two, three, four, five. Now you're gonna keep doing those things, five back blows, five chest compressions, either until baby hopefully coughs it up or until 911 arrives or in the worst case, if baby were to become unresponsive to do CPR. I know all of these things sound really, really, really scary, but what is scariest is being in an emergency and not knowing what to do. When you know what to do, you can have the peace of mind that you would be able to react and save a life in the moment. Now, key to know this is not a certification course there are wonderful certification courses and i highly encourage you to take them either through the heart saver course through the american heart association or courses through the american red cross you can find those online in your local area in the meantime go back rewind watch this video practice this on dolls practice this on your children not full force of course Practice it on them because you want it to become second nature. Because when we hear of people in emergencies like choking where they saved a life and you talk to them, they say, I didn't even think. I had learned it. I watched it on a video. I didn't think I'd ever need to use it. And then this happened and I just jumped in and it was second nature. I remembered what I had learned. I jumped in and I saved a life.
And I hope that you never, ever, ever, ever need to use this information. But I do want you to have the peace of mind that comes with knowing that if you were ever in a situation where you did, you would know what to do. Make sure to subscribe to our True Lab Insider. Subscribe here or follow us on social for more great information.